This week we invite you to join us in an expedition, a sort of nocturnal expedition in a beautiful old library. We will play book detectives under the guidance of Scott Mandelbrot and learn what we can know about the book without reading it. How many people are involved in producing a book? We have the author, we have the publisher, the bookbinder, the bookseller. Can we try to imagine how many people are behind an old book? Philosophers tend to think of books as texts. Now, how about thinking of books as objects? Okay, so who decides how the book is going to be bound? I think what we can tell about this book, this copy of the book is that it was a copy um, bound for and given away by Bacon. Books are also survivors. They have seen a lot. And it's indeed surprising how enduring some of the old books really are. Try to think of books as time capsules. Each of them is a unique object that can tell its own story. But this is the first book that was sold widely by subscription. Um, this is the London Polyglot Bible. Um, now I do this properly, one really needs to stand this thing up on something because this book's too big. Um, but this was a, a book printed by the, um, well, man who was the king's printer in oriental tongues, although there was no king in 1657, um, Thomas Roycroft, um, on imported paper, expensive imported paper, and had special dispensation to import paper from France. The main text, as you can see, is enormously complex to print. It involves printing in Hebrew, Samaritan type, Arabic, um, Greek type as well. Uh, where's the Greek gone? Oh, Greek's over here. Um, uh, and it took uh, quite a long time to produce in six volumes like this, six large volumes. Join us on Friday for a new episode of our Philosophical Café, Philosophy After Dark. Let's play together Book Detectives with Scott Mandelbrot in a discussion hosted by Dana Jalobanu, Alexander Lichu and Grigore Vita.